The Nightside Project. Finish the day happy, happy with Ethan Millard and Alex Keery on KSL News Radio. Welcome to the Nightside Project. This is part of our ongoing coverage of the Sundance Film Festival. I'm joined right here uh, by filmmaker Michael Dweck, and as you can see by our hats, he's here with the film The Last Race. And I, the thing that I love about this film is that it's dealing with a topic that not just spans the whole country, but really has a strong connection here to the state of Utah, because Michael's film has is taking a close look at these local racetracks where amateur semi-professional racers can get together race in their communities it's been such an awesome part of americana over the decades mm -hmm. i mean sure. really since the end of world war ii these That's racetracks true. have been a big deal true well at some point there were there were three thousand racetracks i mean every town had one yeah because it, it's it was a place for people to play right you're right the mechanic that you knew in your neighborhood and and some of your friends that were, you know, uh, just hobbyists would t work in their cars every night and then Friday night, Saturday night, get on a racetrack in front of a thousand people who they knew under the lights and, you know, and race. And you're a, you're a hero. Yeah, you're a hero. You're a hero. Yeah. But that's so, what's so cool. What I, what I saw about this film is that you watch people like we have, a, you know, some, one guy's a postal worker, one guy's a mechanic, one guy cleans, you know, he's an oil burn mechanic. You watch them transform. You watch ordinary people yeah. transform into heroes, like you say, right? They get to this racetrack, and all of a sudden, somebody who had a pain in their arm, somebody who was, you know, we, during the week, we, we filmed him, he was 40 years old, his back's been killing him because he's a grease monkey. He's standing straight, he's 21 years old, and, you know, and he's ready to go. He's racing his car. And he's got a, and he's got a crew. That's fantastic. He's got a crew. Yeah. So your film takes a look at uh, what's happening in these tracks, and yeah. just one by one, in fact, our, our local track here, Rocky Mountain Raceway, yeah, is closing. I know, I know it. We're falling victim to this same phenomenon that you're describing in your film. Yeah, exactly. What is that? What's happening exactly. in these tracks? Well, they're being consumed. I mean, they're, they're being consumed by, you know, real estate prices are going up. People, for some reason, think they need to build more shopping malls. And then once you kind of strip these trees down, they complain, well, now it's loud. Yeah. And the shopping malls <laughs> complain. They forgot that the race back in there. Like in the yeah. case of the last race, the Riverhead Raceway has been there since 1949. Yeah. And when we started to shoot there, it was it was called the cauliflower capital of the world. Cauliflower and pine trees. Yeah. And as we were shooting over the five years, the, all the pine trees came down. All the pine trees came down. And all the cauliflower is gone. And all the farmland has gone, and what came is two Walmarts and one street. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Home Depot, Lowe's, a 450 store outlet center. Yeah. And now the racetrack is, is the last piece of land left in this in this street. And they can't and they, hold out. And they want 10 million, you know, they've offered 10 million dollars for it. So the owners are saying, the owners are 87 year old couple, a woman, uh, Barbara Crom and her husband Jim. Barbara's a strong woman. Imagine she's had. Broken at the racetrack, she's kind of you know got you know broken hips, strokes. Both of them have strokes and broken hips. 87 years old, still come out, open this racetrack every Saturday and Sunday. Come out with NASCAR uniforms on, take it very seriously. Yeah. And they're identified with the track, and they're offered. We see them. They come knocking on the trailer door. Hey, I'm that I'm the guy next door that has that mall, and I'd like to just offer you I don't know five million dollars for this. And they go, get the hell out of my trailer, man. Get out, get out. <laughs> Jeez. You know. But because they want to keep it alive, yeah. you know, they want to so, and I think that's what's happening, you know, Rocky Mountain, Thunder, you know, Thunder closed last year, last October was their last time, and now yeah. people are traveling, you know, to Durango, Colorado, that's seven hours, they're traveling two and a half hours south, yeah. you know, but we need these, we need the communities, communities need these, instead of being disconnected, you yeah. know, with technology, right, and then that leads to people, you know, less empathy, is that you need to be more connected to feel something more visceral like a racetrack yeah you know? well and, and these are an opportunity not only to get out there and do it yourself yeah drive your own car that's work right. on your own car your friends work with your friends mm -hmm. but also it's affordable for people that's right correct. they can get yeah. out there this is a ticket price that they can handle that's right and it's a great day of man. entertainment twenty dollars five hours of entertainment and and you're getting something that that appeals to all your senses you know in some ways it, this seems a little counterintuitive because if you look at a few other places um, NASCAR is booming. Yeah. Uh, Formula One is, I, I, I think it's the richest sport in the entire world yeah, at sure, this point. I'm sure, sure I mean, it is. it's, you know, those things are booming. Yeah. Yet the local tracks are suffering so much. And, yeah, because yeah, they're just not, I guess, maybe they're not as glamorous. They don't get TV coverage. But the, the interesting thing is that, that the local racetracks are where NASCAR came from. Richard Petty and, you know, Bobby Allison and 
Gail Arbor, all these guys, these guys yeah. all started. They were bootleggers. A lot yeah, of them. that's right. Yeah, bootleggers, mechanics, um, and and they kind of and I think you know NASCAR kind of realized that. That's why NASCAR is kind of helping with this. You know, yeah. they're supporting the film a little bit by saying that they think the DNA of NASCAR kind of came from this yeah. uh, from the local stock cars. But uh, but it's true. But hopefully, you know, people see the film, they'll get inspired to go to you know support their local racetrack. We have at the at the premiere. So one of the local racers, two of the local racers Great. coming, they're bringing a car, that car, they're bringing a car, this we had painted right up, here yeah. on the hat. they had cool. painted up, they've been doing it all week, working all night long in this car, yeah. get it painted up, it's done, it's coming today, so you'll see it around town. Well, I hope this is, I hope this is a film that us locals can really get behind, because yeah, we do have our own track, and w w there are a couple of others across the state uh, where you see a lot of demolition derbies. That's a, yeah. that's a, up that in started the, Long Island, by the way, demo derby. It, did it really? Because up, Speedway. up in the mountains, there are a couple mountain towns that are, yeah kind of legendary for that stuff. Yeah. And uh, and then of course we've got the Salt Flats. They do. So, you know, we have our own motorsports and racing yeah. heritage out yeah. here. So That should stay. Yeah. I mean, that should stay and thrive. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, make sure you check it out. It's called The Last Race and hopefully we'll uh, uh, make sure you come up here and check it out uh, at one of the Sundance screenings or hopefully we'll see it uh, down in Salt Lake at a theater or two as well. So, yeah. cool. Michael, thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot.